are aircraft grade uh, stainless steel, uh, meaning that you know they're reinforced and you're not going to have that exhaust um, leak that the 5.7s are notorious for. What is going on today guys? My name is Alex. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have another edition of Wednesday Night Shop Talk um, and I think you guys are going to like this. We're going to talk about the major differences between the 6.4 Hemi and the 5.7 Hemi in terms of why the 6.4 Hemi is a much more heavy duty engine than the 5.7. So stay tuned. I think you guys will like this. This is my truck, beautiful power wagon, and it obviously has the 6.4 Hemi in it. And I wanted to make a video, you know, kind of talking about the differences between the 6.4 Hemi and the 5.7. Um, and it just seems like there's not too much information, you know, readily available about that. Um, so I thought we would talk about that. Um, now, first of all, I am guilty of just simply thinking that the 6.4 Hemi is, um, you know, just basically the same engine with a bigger displacement, which is why it gives it, you know, more power, more torque. Obviously that's true, but there's a lot more to the 6.4 Hemi than you probably think. Now, before we get going here, um, there's the 6.4, uh, let's call it the truck engine, and there's the 6.4 SRT engine, which is in the cars, um, the Challengers, the Chargers, and that is quite a bit of a different engine. Same displacement, um, but those two engines are pretty different. The SRT has just under 500 horsepower. This engine only has 410 horsepower, um, and you know, the torques are relatively kind of the same there. The SRT 6.4 was built and designed for a completely different purpose. Um, this truck 6.4 was designed um, with you know a couple things in mind, durability, um, longevity, and strength. And that is why it is like quote unquote detuned. Um, and that's what also makes it a very, very strong engine, as you guys will uh, come to see here in a bit. And the other thing I wanna talk about before we really get into it is, you know, the 5.7 is a great engine. I am not hating on the 5.7. I had one in my old Ram 1500, absolutely loved it. It is an absolutely great engine for the Ram 1500s. Um, tons of power, it's strong. It does exactly what it needs to do. So there's no hate to the 5.7. I just wanna point out why the 6.4 is not necessarily just bigger displacement. You know, it's a stronger, beefier engine meant to handle a much more heavy duty life um, with lots of abuse. Let's start with the obvious. Um, <laughs> The 5.7 is uh, 5.7 liters of displacement. The 6.4 has 6.4 liters of displacement. So the 6.4 is just naturally a bigger engine. Um, and um, the 5.7 produces 395 horsepower, 410 foot-pounds of torque, whereas the 6.4 um, has 410 um, horsepower and I believe 429 or 428 foot-pounds of torque um, officially. So the first major difference um, between these engines isn't actually that major, but I think it's very big. As you guys may or may not know, uh, the 5.7s are notorious for having exhaust manifold leaks. Uh, basically the studs on the back of the heads um, either rot away or snap and it kind of leads to a nasty kind of exhaust ticking sound. And uh, they're, they're pretty common. Not the worst fix, but uh, it, it, it's annoying. Now these 6.4s do not have that problem. Um, the exhaust manifold gasket and the fasteners are aircraft grade uh, stainless steel, uh, meaning that you know they're reinforced and you're not gonna have that exhaust um, leak that the 5.7s are notorious for. So I think that's a good place to start off because um, you know that's a very big difference and uh, it's a plus for these 6.4s. So besides the exhaust uh, manifold gaskets, the number one thing I think that's difference between the 6.4 and the 5.7 is the engine cooling. Um, and there's a couple of things about that. So Ram engineers knew they were trying to build an engine that could you know, handle a lot of workload. Um, and be durable and have good longevity. So when you're working an engine under load or working an engine hard, the biggest thing that's gonna kill it is heat. 
And so the Ram engineers knew that they had to upgrade a lot of um, you know, cooling when it came to the 6.4 if it was gonna live up um, to be able to do all that stuff. The 6.4 comes with a high volume oil cooler um, basically runs oil through a cooler which is cooled with engine coolant. Uh, the 5.7 does not have an external oil cooler and I have first-hand experience when putting the engine under lots of load, towing up a mountain, that the actual oil temp starts to climb pretty rapidly. Um, I'll show you some footage of that and I actually had to back off the throttle because the oil temp was getting too hot with my Ram 1500. Inflation makes sir. I mean, I gotta keep an eye on the oil temperature. I don't know if you guys can see my gauges, but the tranny and the oil temp are getting a little bit toasty. Now, when I was towing about 8,200 pounds with this truck, granted it was not up the mountains, but um, my oil temp stayed solid. There was no deviation whatsoever. Even when we were on a slight grade and the RPMs came up real high, that oil temp stayed solid. And that's probably because that high volume oil cooler uh, piston oil jets are on the 6.4 um, and they're not on the 5.7. What does that mean? Well, basically there's a little jet that, uh, you know, sprays the underside of the piston with engine oil and it helps to cool that piston, um, you know, to avoid uh, detonation and all kinds of fun stuff. Now, the last thing in terms of cooling differences is the sodium filled exhaust valves. Um, now, again, what does that mean? Well, basically, um, you know, your exhaust valve can get very hot and it can cause detonation. Now, what is detonation? So detonation is when your air fuel mixture comes into the cylinder and the exhaust valve is so hot that it actually ignites that mixture before the spark does. And that can cause a whole heap of problems. It's not healthy for the engine. So you wanna avoid that at all costs. So they fill the exhaust valve with sodium. The sodium melts. Um, and then it just keeps that exhaust valve much cooler, so you avoid that. Now, why not the intake valve? So the intake doesn't get as hot because you're getting that fresh air coming through the intake, whereas the exhaust valve does not get that fresh air. So in consequence, the intake valve always kind of stays cool naturally, where the exhaust valve does not, which is why they filled it with sodium to really help deal with that heat. Okay, so moving on from cooling, we're going into the oil. So the 5.7 takes 5W20, this 6.4 takes 0W40. So when this engine is up to temp, the oil is going to be acting like a 40 weight oil uh, versus the 5.7 that runs 5W20. So when the 5.7 is up to temp, the oil is gonna act like a 20 weight oil. Now, why is that important? Well, let me share my opinion on that. Um, I think it just goes to show that this engine is running thicker oil because it's meant to be abused more. Um, you know, thicker oil doesn't necessarily mean that it can take more abuse, but I think it allows the engine to be lubricated um, better when it is taking abuse at, you know, proper running temperatures. The 6.4 also has a forged crankshaft. Uh, the 5.7 does not. So a forged component can take a lot more abuse. It's a lot stronger and in some cases can be lighter. Um, you know, whereas most components are cast, basically liquid metal going into a form and then shaping, whereas a forged crankshaft is actually beaten, um, you know, hot metals beaten into place, uh, making a much stronger uh, material. And so the fact that there's a forged crank here allows this engine to be a lot stronger and take a ton more abuse, um, which again is what this 6.4 is designed to be a heavy duty engine. Going along with, you know, heavy duty, um, the 6.4 block is thicker than the 5.7. It's a cast iron block with high nickel content and slightly shorter water jackets, which basically means that the cylinder walls can be thicker and more rigid and more strong. And so between the forged crank and the thicker block, it really just adds to making a good, strong engine. The next major difference is the engine heads. Think of the heads on the 6.4 as Hellcat heads with a 6.4 bolt pattern versus a 6.2 bolt pattern. Um, these heads were designed by the SRT engineers with a keen um, focus on you know durability and a heavy duty application. The casting for these heads is derived from the Hellcat heads, uh, giving these 
um, had substantial internal reinforcement as well as improved um, water jackets. They use what's called 356 um, aluminum alloy, which is exceptional at heat dissipation. And these heads are great for um, cylinder pressure um, as well as thermal stresses. So um, in fact, this engine, this the 64 truck engine is actually much better um, at handling boost than the SRT 64. Um, and that just goes to show that you know these engines, these six fours mean business. They're built strong and they're built to take um, a lot of pressure and a lot of heat. Connecting rods on the six four are basically the same as the Hellcat, um, the exact same dimensions um, and all that fun stuff. So again, just goes to show that the engineers who built this six four. Um, you know, they, they meant business. This is a, this is a very strong engine. So those are kind of the major differences that I thought were important. Um, you know, when kind of talking about why the 6.4 is not just necessarily a bigger displacement engine, why it truly is a heavy duty engine in comparison to the 5.7. And again, I, there is no hate to the 5.7. I think it is a wonderful engine and when you buy a 1500, you shouldn't be expecting to absolutely beat day in, day out on your engine. That's not what it's made for. Now, the last thing I'll touch on on the 6.4 um, is the pistons. Now, the reason why it's not a difference is because the 5.7 has the exact same type of pistons, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, now, I'm sure you guys can correct me. Um, they are called Hyper Utictic Pistons. Look at that, even highlighted my notes. Um, so basically, they're aluminum pistons, um, well, they're an aluminum alloy um, with a high silicone content. So normally aluminum has a very high um, thermal expansion um, in comparison to iron. So the block is iron and the pistons are aluminum. The pistons are gonna expand much more than the iron when it gets hot. And so what you need to do is leave um, you know, big tolerances because as the aluminum pistons expand and the iron doesn't expand as much, um, you know, it's gonna cause issues if the aluminum expands too much. Now, with these types of pistons, um, when you add silicone content, it actually lowers the coefficient of thermal expansion, meaning that you can have very light, strong aluminum pistons, yet still have very tight tolerances, which is kind of cool. And the other benefit of adding uh, silicone to the aluminum alloy for these pistons is that um, the pistons become much harder and much less susceptible to scuffing when either uh, it is cold rev, so when your engine's cold, or when there's um, a lot of heat generated in the engine, AKA towing. So, um, you know, these pistons are very strong and they're light. So I thought they're very cool, so I want to touch on that. Um, but like I said, the 5.7 does have the same pistons um, as well as the 6.4. So, the 5.7 is still a very strong engine. Now, like I said last week, um, if you guys have anything to add to that, or if I misspoke there, please let me know in the comments. You know, I, lo I love listening to what you guys have to say. You guys are very knowledgeable. Um, and I don't work on these engines firsthand, so everything I research is research. It's not firsthand knowledge. Um, you know, it's what I read on the internet, which may or may not be true. So please let me know if I'm wrong or if I need to add some stuff because, um, you know, I, I love doing this kind of stuff. I'm very interested and uh, you guys always seem to have good knowledge. So all in all, I think Ram did a good job, um, you know, when engineering this engine. I think it's going to serve its purpose very well. One thing to note, it is not fuel efficient whatsoever, but I don't think that's the purpose of this engine. The 5.7 on the other hand, I think there was probably a lot of research and development into making, you know, the 400 horsepower engine that it is very fuel efficient. Whereas this engine, I think they were less concerned about fuel efficiency and more concerned about durability, longevity, and strength. And it shows. All right, guys, I hope you liked the video. Maybe you learned a thing or two um, I think next week I will be focusing on the differences between the 6.4 truck engine and the 6.4 SRT engine. Um, like the 5.7 and the 6.4, there is quite a bit of differences, even though they do share the same displacement, the two um, 6.4 engines there. But as always, if you like the video, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And if you like cool stuff like this, 
don't forget to subscribe. We are shockingly approaching the 10,000 subscriber mark. Um, we got just under 7,000 subscribers right now. It's uh, it's kind of cool to see. Um, you know, I'm I'm so appreciative of everyone who's subscribed and you know continues to watch watch the channel. Um, you know, but I think it would be really cool to get over that 10,000 subscriber mark, and uh, that would be awesome. Anyways, enough of me, guys. We'll see you in the next freaking video.